welcome back to my youtube channel my name is victoria ajayi bembe if you're new here welcome 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 thank you so much for joining me um please remember to subscribe and to hit the like button and leave a comment if you like what you see and what you hear to everyone who has subscribed god i am so grateful thank you guys so very much i mean you guys keep encouraging me to do more of this and thank you thank you i really cannot thank you enough god bless you thank you and if you're yet to please make sure you do today we'll be talking about dealing with the imposter syndrome so if you don't know if this is your first time of hearing about the word imposter syndrome you probably are experiencing it or you probably have experienced it at one point of your life or the other or you have not I mean it's not everybody but i mean for me i i've always experienced this since i started my very first job and i'm going to tell you probably why when i mean as we move on in this video but let me just give you a background to what imposter syndrome is before we even move into it it's the feeling of inadequacy a feeling of um, incompetence when you feel like you're a fraud and when you feel like everything you've ever accomplished in life is just a matter of luck you've just been lucky you don't deserve it you know all your accomplishments is just you know based on you've been somewhere at the right time or you've been saying something or just you know luck just pure luck and very soon someone is going to find out and your secret will be out <laughs> Oh my god, did I struggle with this when I was just starting up and you know the funniest thing was I did not know that there was a name for what I was feeling All I knew was that I was struggling a lot with my self-confidence. I was always struggling with my self-worth I always felt like god. I don't deserve this job. I have I don't deserve to be where I am right now And I was always living in constant fear that one day someone is going to find out one day They are going to realize that I don't deserve this job one day They are going to realize that you know, I'm a fraud and I don't know why I lived in constant and fear of the fact that someone is going to get me for being me <laughs> to be honest I struggle with this in my career I struggle with this in my spiritual life I struggle with this in my personal life in my friendship I all I used to struggle with this so much and this syndrome kept me a lot from pursuing a lot of dreams from pursuing like at a point even when I mean after I was interning for a while you know I was being promoted and I was so scared the day I was promoted I was terrified because I felt like God they are promoting me what if they find out or they realize that I'm you know all these years I've, I've just been lucky actually this imposter syndrome <laughs> actually kept me from accepting a very huge job opportunity because i just felt like i mean i went for the interview we had tests we had everything and i passed everything with flying colors it was left with we two just two of us out of about 15 people that were interviewed and within the two of us there were lots of debates and everything eventually they picked me they picked me for the job this job was going to pay me four times what i was earning currently and they were going to like do my work permit then that was in ghana they were going to do like so many things for me and for some reason i started feeling fear because i felt like wow they're offering me all this money that means that the responsibility might be too much and what if they find out that maybe i just know how to talk i don't know how to walk the walk and i have experience i've worked in this like sector for a long time i know what i'm doing but i just had this fear inside of me and before you knew it i sent an email and i told them that i'm sorry i won't be able to accept the job why not because i tried it and i failed but because i just had this voice in my head telling me that hey you are going to flop this you're going to flop this big time and because of that i refused the job opportunity and that was the most painful decision i've ever made in my life ever in my life and why because of the imposter syndrome because of this voice in my head that keeps telling me that you don't deserve what you have you are going to fail you are they are going to find out pretty soon that you are undeserving like there are 15 people came for that interview what makes you think you are better than them and stuff like that i rejected that job and before you know i started praying about it and then before i realized that hey listen you have to at least give this a try and i sent an email and asked them that is the job still available of course they said no <laughs> i mean it was a really really devastating experience for me but i i guess maybe it was also i don't know i i don't want to say maybe god didn't want me to have the job because to be honest I mean, I passed everything with flying colors. If God did not want me to, why would they call me? Literally, when I rejected the offer, the lady called me and she was like, what's happening? Is it about the money? Because I already told them that I had other, and I did have other prospects. And she was like, is it about the money and everything? I said, no, I just have to settle a lot of things and I have to go back to my country. I just gave some flimsy excuses. And that was it. That was how I 
I mean, I missed out on this job opportunity, but you know, whatever, like <laughs> that's a lesson. That's something I've learned from, but that's just for you to know how bad or how much this syndrome or this psychological um, problem or issue can actually affect you. It can affect everything around you. It can affect the, your opportunities. It can affect so many things, like so many things. Now we'll be talking about the different types of imposter syndrome. This research was done by Dr. Valerie Young in her book, The Secret Thoughts of Successful Women. So I'll just be sharing a few things I read and things I learned or, you know, giving my own explanation or example or whatever to it. So according to this book, the first type of um, imposter syndrome is the perfectionist. Now, these are people that, you know, they set excessively high expectation for themselves. Expectations that they know that they will not be able to meet. Maybe, you know, you are a marketer and you need to like meet 50 prospects or that your average of um, prospects you meet or the highest you can meet is 50. Then you set a goal for yourself like 100 and you want to meet it. And the other part is that they don't ask for help. They want to do everything themselves because they want everything to be perfect. So for this particular set of people, they don't find contentment in what they do. They don't celebrate their success because they always feel like they could have done better. And the problem with that is if you don't if you don't celebrate the little stride that you make in life, you will burn out. One of the problems of perfectionists is that they define themselves by the mistakes that they make in life. So you also have to check yourself. Am I a person that any little mistake I make, I amplify it? Like people make numerous mistakes, but the moment I make one little thing, when I was having this issue, I would always like panic and I would be so upset with myself. So if you're a perfectionist, the, the odds are that you will not succeed. And because of that, you start to feel doubt. You start to doubt your ability. You start to doubt your, com your competence. You start to doubt, you know, the opportunities that have opened onto you, you start to doubt everything because you set too much goals for yourself and at the end of the day, you are unable to meet those goals just because of the imposter syndrome. Now, the second one are the supermen or the superwomen, those who feel like they have to keep on working to be able to get their self-worth. So they are always striving, always, you know, they stay late at work, they are the last to leave the work, they are the first to get to work, they are always taking up projects that they did not ask them to do. They are always trying to like, you know, make themselves useful because they are defined by their job. So if you're a kind of person like that, that you are always trying, you define your success, you define your achievements, you define yourself by your work. You are always trying as much as possible to get as much things done, adding a lot of things to your to-do list just so you can feel a sense of fulfillment. Now, the problem with these people is that they always seek for validation from working. They always feel like they need to be validated. And that's the issue because you have to know how to validate yourself and not put your self-validation in the hands of somebody else. If you leave your, your sense of fulfillment in the hands of somebody else, then you're limiting yourself. Even when they give you validation, you always feel like, you know, you don't, you don't want to lose the validation. So because of that, you're putting more work on yourself. And God, did I struggle with this too. Oh God, I have a lot of problems. <laughs> I mean, I also struggle because you are always taking up so much tax. Hey, at a point in that job, I was the social media manager. I was the administrative intern. I was the business development assistant. I was also the executive assistant to the CEO. <laughs> All of this, I said, it's, and I was still going to school. I like my success and everything was defined by what I was doing. So I was always taking on as much task as possible just because I want to prove that you know I deserve what I'm doing imposter syndrome number two <laughs> let's go to number three the next type of imposter syndrome are those who um, the genius the genius syndrome those are people who like they pride themselves in not struggling or in not putting too much effort to their work because they are like naturally gifted now the problem with these people is that they don't give themselves chances that's just the thing the moment they do something once and they feel they feel down it gets to them it makes them feel stupid it makes them feel like you know incapable now i have never been a genius genius kind of person person that learn so i i also had that struggle in a way because when i learned something i believe that i should be able to do it fast 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 without any help and everything and then when such a thing doesn't happen i find myself feeling discouraged feeling you know like i, I failed myself and stuff like that so people that have the genius syndrome they they are too hard on themselves they are too critical of themselves okay and then the next one are the soloists According to the book, those are the people that, you know, they don't ask for help. They like to do things on their own. And it's okay for you to be independent. It's okay for you to want to like try things out and all of that. But 
if you get to an extent whereby you are even offered help and you don't want any help you just want to do everything by yourself you don't know how to delegate tasks and stuff like that it's going to be a problem because you're going to burn out and of course like it's not every task task you can do by yourself and then you don't grow you don't grow because you don't get feedback you don't like feedback and also because like you don't allow other people to share their ideas you want to do things by yourself because you cannot you only grow to the level of your exposure if you are not exposed if you don't allow people to like you know contribute to what you're doing you know you end up being in the same level and then at the end of the day if you are not able to if you're unable to like meet up with the task you blame yourself and then there's the expert those who whose focus are on what they know and how much they know they they never know enough and their greatest fear is for someone to realize that they don't know and what they do is that they find they end up like you know hoarding knowledge and information things they don't need now the way to for the way to combat this for the perfectionist is to always number one learn to take your mistakes learn to accept that listen i'm going to make mistakes in life and it's part of life and also try to stop you know one of the problem with with, with perfectionists is that they always for the right time they always wait for the right moment they always wait for the right opportunity and the, and one thing the way this thing affects me is that or used to affect me was that sometimes in meeting they will ask a question or they will bring up something like can anyone suggest something and i know what i want i know i, I know the answer to the question but i just feel like i need to research more and have more knowledge and then after the meeting i'm going to send an email to the person who asked just so you know i'm knowledgeable in case any question comes i'll be able to answer now the problem is that somebody else in the meeting is going to speak up and guess what the person gets all the glory and then i'm there killing like wondering in myself that why did i not just say it why didn't i just say it why didn't i just say it so that's another way so try to speak up try to start a project even if you don't it's not the perfect time or it's not the the ideal moment or you know the perfect moment try to make sure that you push yourself to start things and then for the superman and superwoman i think i think you just need to make sure that you know how to validate yourself validate your success celebrate your success celebrate yourself any any little stride you make celebrate it don't be too critical of yourself that will really go a long way and then for for the genius you know you just have to get to that point where you tell yourself or you tell yourself that listen to get to greater heights it takes steps you know so take your success your success in strides try as much as possible to take it one day at a time accept that mistakes are part of life so you don't have to be too critical of, of your of yourself also and you know accept mistakes when they happen and always give yourself a second chance try as much as possible to always give yourself a second chance a third chance a fourth chance and realize that you are only humans you are not a machine so one the one way or the other you are going to make mistakes and it's part of life for the soloist always ask for help always try to ask for help ask for help when you need it try to delegate tasks don't be a hoarder of tasks okay i used to work for a, 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 a supervisor like that also who find it very difficult to delegate and then i'm there I, like i know this thing i can do it but she just wants to do it herself because you know that's just the way she is she likes to make sure everything you know she wants to just get get everything done by herself she feels it's faster and everything so you end up burning out and you know I mean just try to ask for help and for the experts make sure that you try as much as possible to learn what you need when you need it or when you think you will need it put a time to your learning process you know if if it's project management you want to do it ask yourself do I am I do I foresee myself taking on any project in the next five years okay yes then you take it up but if you want to learn about sociology or something ask yourself do i really need this in my field is there any possible way that i'll come across this in my field no even if there is a one percent chance you don't need it okay somebody else is going to take it up okay so it's good to always in, um improve on yourself and on your skills but don't make it excessively don't allow um the imposter syndrome to ruin to ruin your chances like it did for me in that particular instance so try as much as possible to put it in check and to always validate yourself to always tell yourself i am worth i am worth what i have i deserve where i am i am here because i work hard to get where i am even if you know you don't you don't believe it at that point think of the all the things you have done in the past the the the, the projects you have handled you know the applause you know that people have given to you and if you need feedback ask for it ask your boss listen um i feel like maybe i'm not is how do you feel or do you think and that's one thing i did i used to ask my supervisor do you think i'm doing what you want me to do do you think i am meeting my targets you know do you think is there any way that you want me to improve on and stuff like that hearing 
you know feedback on your work on from somebody else will actually help you to know that hey listen at least they, they see what I'm doing and you know they appreciate my work and they feel like I'm contributing so that's also one thing that you want to do so don't allow the imposter syndrome to make you lose out in life because it's going to ruin you it's going to make you be jealous it's going to make you be envious of others and it's going to make you live in total it's going to make you lack total self-confidence in yourself and in your abilities and that is where you don't want to be trust me you don't want to be there you don't want to be there so i hope this has been helpful to you if it has please leave a comment if you have any other suggestion on how to deal with the imposter syndrome please leave a comment also and we will um, discuss in the comment section thank you so much for joining me again um, please remember to subscribe to give this video a thumbs up and also to share um, thank you so very much. My name again is Victoria Ajayi Bebe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.